Um, <clears throat> Hi, I'm Jam. Uh, I, I do several things. I have a really cool title at a company that's been a real privilege to be part of since 2008. I was the 18th Aquian. Um, and the evangelist title means that um, I'm in marketing. I do communications stuff. Is that interviews, podcasts, writing things. Um, and uh, depending on the conference I might be speaking at, sometimes it's innovation and uh, evangelists, and sometimes it's developer relations, and sometimes it's open source and, and what have you. It's a great catch-all for some really uh, nice activities. And I tend to, um, you know, personally what interests me is the, is, is the context of technology, why we do it, what does it deliver for us. Um, that's, that's my thing. So uh, I'm very active uh, online, pretty easy to find. dev.acquia.com slash podcast. Um, there are more than 200 interviews I've done there with people in and around Drupal open source, uh, lots of different aspects of that. And uh, yeah, please uh, ping me online, follow me on Twitter. I'm very noisy there. It's great. Now, everyone, I would like a gigantic warm DrupalCon welcome from my friend Matthias. That's me. All the way here from Dusseldorf, Germany, because I asked him if he'd come and do this thing with me. Yeah, for whatever reason. <laughs> so cheers. Um, I'm, uh, I'm Matthias. I'm a CEO of Type 3 Inc., which is a Type 3, so maybe people don't know we're the competition. Um, much in the sense how Doctors Without Borders are compet competing with, uh, you know, like the Red Cross kind of thing, because we're still in open source, also GPL. Um, and um, I have a history of like about 17 years in open source right now. Um, that's the Twitter handle. Um, and this is basically all the information you need about me, because I'm not interesting anyways. Um, so we want to give you a short outline of what this session is about because we've known each other for... A couple of years. Yeah, we were younger. <laughs> we, were, we were definitely younger before. Um, and so we just came up with the idea to collaborate more because it just makes more sense. So what we want to give you an idea about in this session is that um, you should be aware of threats to open source software in general because those are coming back big time. We've seen stuff happening in Europe which is disturbing to say the least. Um, then we want to give you an idea how we can counter these threats, which AKA is to play the game the others play as well. Um, we want to hope and try to explain why collaboration is better than protectionism about uh, your code. Um, then that's the standard stuff, like be open-minded and of course stay open-minded over a period of time because we consider that extremely important. And in the end, we're an open source because we want to do, uh, make the world a better place, right? Hopefully. So we'll start with some history. You yep. want to take that? Yeah. Do it. So I think the, I think the first, um, I'd like to sort of underscore who Matthias is. He's the product owner of a PHP GPL CMS that uses Symfony components. Um, and as the product owner, he's, you know, sort of the Dries of the non-technical side of his CMS. And his CMS is a big deal, especially in Germany. There's a lot of adoption in German-speaking Europe, yeah. especially. Um, and they've gone through their own fascinating, interesting history. We'll touch on that a little bit. Um, like it, yeah. But, you know, in a lot of senses of the word, Typo 3 is a competitor. Um, and we want to talk uh, about in what context that makes sense and a lot of contexts that doesn't make sense. And this is, so this is, for me, this is a different perspective on the open source versus proprietary situation that we find ourselves in, all of us. I should do that? Yeah, you should do that. The history of open source. Um, so uh, we founded Type of 3, like in, uh, that works better, right? In uh, 1997, so we're going to have our 20th anniversary in a couple of weeks' time. Um, then we can say that in the beginning of the 2000s, that was the rise of open source software, right? Aside from our service run Linux or Unix or stuff like that. So your application level became open, more and more open source. Um, in 2001, Drupal showed up, which was a good thing. Um, and, wow. 
Then we considered 2005, the end of the open source wars. Who, who was in open source back in 2005 already? It's more people than I thought. That's a good thing. For those who, who were not, those were the times when you actually had to fight to get open source running in enterprises. Um, I recall we were sitting with uh, Lufthansa, which is like this huge German airline, and we had to convince the marketing guy to state that he was using our open source solution, but he was, well, open source is no company policy, we won't do it. We had the same stuff with SAP, that said we won't use open source, and we were like, yeah, but you just released your own open source database three weeks ago, and he was like, we did? It showed up, called market, okay, open source is cool. <laughs> and, and by the way, Lufthansa, Lufthansa's uh, online entertainment system now is powered by Drupal 8, which is a super interesting use case. The media center on the AIDA cruise ships is powered by Type 3. So, <laughs> that's how we work. So, and, and in the end, it's content, right? It doesn't have to be a website. Um, of course, but still, you know, in 2005, that was basically when this entire thing, you know, open source became en vogue. You were allowed to use it officially. Um, and basically, until now, that's what we call the golden era, right? You no longer have to complain about open source getting into an enterprise. Um, it's, it's easy to argue. Everybody gets it. Um, and this is what we consider, well, also a good thing. Um, the proprietary market, on the other hand, was basically caught off guard and by surprise with the rise of open source software. If you take a look at proprietary content management systems in the early 2000s, not so cool. Um, and um, they, were, they, they are too big and too slow to turn around and, and adapt to the level of technology that projects like Drupal or Type of 3 brought into the market. Um, as well with that, with their client base, there were two bulky, you know, and they, they were too slow and bulky to innovate on their own terms. Um, and this is why we all do conferences like this rather than this 50 people meetups that we used to do in the early days. Um, so we can safely say that we knocked them down in the mid-2000s, um, but we didn't quite knock them out yet. Um, so if we take a look what open source did in those golden years and what happened. Um, so we, we figured we should talk about what we're good at, yeah. right? You want to do that? Yeah, sure. Cool. So on open source, we're super good at a, at a bunch of things. We're really, really, really good at refactoring that component and then rebuilding it in another language and then updating that implementation and making that even cooler, super shiny feature to add to that other feature that we already built. Um, we're good at traveling and evangelizing and hanging out and, and you know, telling each other how great we are, right? Um, we're really good at building user groups and we're, you know, very, very good at creating great conferences like, like, like here. Impressive, to be honest. Things we're not so good at in open source, depending on the country and the community, we're not the greatest business people taken as a whole um, and... I know how to build a website and somebody paid me for it and hey presto, that means I can build websites and when I don't have enough hours in the day, I hire somebody else to build more websites next to me and when she doesn't have enough hours in the day, then we hire someone else. Like That's the sophistication of our business thinking in many cases um, and it's not scalable and it's not very advanced. And so, But you know, it's paid our rent for a long time. I think the time has come, and this is another talk, time has come to think further about that. Um, we're sort of, we have some legal problems along the way, uh, trademark issues, naming things is hard, right? Um, and connecting our stuff to non-open source stuff when this could be a huge opportunity for us to really greatly expand our market and our ability to make loads of money, right? Which in, yeah. like, I would like that for all of us here. And things that were super awesome, you want to do awesome? Uh, okay, I'll do awesome. You're awesome, you do awesome. Right, so. That time that Typo 3 lost the bid that we got, right? How much Joomla sucks, you know? Celebrating how great we are and how piss poor somebody else is. 
We're kind of awesome at that, I hate to say, right? Um, we're really, really good at building our things and doing our projects and being on our island and siloed, and this is our enterprise technology that you may not have, except we're open source, right? We live, we know that sharing our code with someone who's smarter than we are, like, then we get better code back, right? So, but we've, you know, there's been a really long time when we, we did not talk, even within PHP. You weren't a PHP dev, right? You were a... Um, PHP BB dev and a typo dev and a Drupal dev, right? And so on. Um, so, not invented here. Drupal 7, right? We're really good at reinventing wheels. We're better. Oh, you're better at vending yeah. wheels? Okay. We, we actually spend $1.4 million. Can you hear him? Does that work? Uh, yeah. But regarding not invented here, we invented not invented here, right? <laughs> so... We actually spent like $1.4 million on a team that wanted to rebuild the next iteration of Type 3, which then never came to life. Um, and we, yeah, awesome, right? Okay. And I'd like to point <laughs> out that the Typo community in this case is just as good as dra at drama as we are. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, the, the guys came up with the idea, yeah, there's Symphony, but we'll, ba we'll build our own framework. Right? And it took us... From scratch. Of course starting with nothing, right? So we're great at fucking up. Um, <laughs> and uh, right now, it's, 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 um, we, we got rid of that, yeah. but we basically lost six years of development in the process uh, because the rest of the Type of 3 community and the core team was like, well, we don't need to innovate because those guys will innovate, right? And they're paid full time. They'll innovate for us. Yeah. Yeah. Great so planning. in the meantime... The sharks that are the proprietary systems in this uh, paradigm, right, have not been asleep. And um, if you've seen, uh, for example, we'll get there, but uh, if you look at things like the Gartner Magic Quadrant, like we do at Acquia, um, this thing called EpiServer has appeared right up with Adobe, right up with Acquia and Drupal, um, and it's a huge threat. And they're cloud aware, they've got personalization, they are ready to scale. They've got great marketing in place. And it's a huge threat because it is a, a, a very close match to Acquia's service offering. But it's a proprietary package with all the disadvantages that we understand. But now we're going to have to go and explain those to clients again. We're going to have to start selling open source again. And we haven't really been doing that for five years or more because we've been in this golden age. Like everybody knows that open source won, right? There's a module for that. There's a module for Open Source One, right? So they've been they've been working really really hard, and I hate to say that you know Adobe Sitecore, Epi Server, and so on, have legit some really really exciting interesting things, and we should be looking at them. Um, they have bigger budgets, even as of three or four years ago. The average deal. Ooh, oh, I could be like a politician now. The average deal size. For Adobe Web Content Management, three years ago, four years ago, and there's a, there was a video on YouTube, somebody said this in public, average deal size was $450,000 of license fees. License, right? With no services and implementation on top of that. Now, picture in your minds how much Drupal, how much Typo3. How much open source. <laughs> how much open source could you deliver for a half a million dollars, right? And, but we have to go back out there and we have to say, you know what? Half a million on licenses before we figure out if it's going to work. Come on. With open source, we're delivering you every dollar you spend is a feature. It's a more beautiful interface. It's something, right? It's better. But they've got much larger deal sizes than we do. Um, and they play dirty. Yeah. How dirty do they play, Matthias? <laughs> yeah, this is, this is when I stated at the beginning that we're having kind of a... Why does that work? A kind of dire situation in Europe. Um, this is what's happening. So there's a recommendation for the entire public sector to only use software that has vendor SLAs. And in, I can see in, you shaking your head in there. In Germany, right? In Western, uh, Western Europe. Western Europe. Yeah, so that includes Netherlands, Belgium. Uh, France is considering it. Um, and if you think about what this means, because this is just a recommendation, just one line, right? Yeah. This is one, one line of regulation. Who thinks they understand the consequences of uh, requiring a vendor SLA for Drupal? 
Who thinks that means Acquia is going to win all the projects in Western Europe? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Unfortunately. This is basically what it means, right? It's like it's, it's one tiny line that includes, uh, excludes all of open source CMS in public tenders. Um, unless there's the official vendor of stuff. So just to give you an idea about service level agreements, who does not know what it is? Awesome, so we can skip those slides. We'll finish early. Um, so the basic idea is that the creator of, the, and that term's important, the creator of the, of the product has to provide services and liability for those products. Um, every commercial CMS does it because it's easy money. Um, every commercial CMS markets it, so clients start picking it up and they go like, yeah, can you offer service level agreements for us? And you go like, no, because <laughs> it's open source and you can do everything yourself. And like, yeah, but the other guys sell it and we want that too. So clients ask for these things, yeah. right? They're totally interested in these stuff. So, so with, with a CMS like Drupal under the GPL, we don't have a contributor's agreement, right? Our, contributor, our contributions are ours, and we sort of give them in perpetuity to everyone else. But the ownership cloud of Drupal is very, very large and very diverse. And um, Acquia, uh, e as big a service provider uh, as we are, and the service... Even if we, you know, Dries is my CTO, right? We still are not the Drupal vendor. There is no official Drupal vendor. Um, there is a workaround that probably works. No, it doesn't. It does work. We check that. So he's got a hidden advantage here that he hasn't talked about yet. In Typo 3, you sign a contributor's agreement. All your software is still GPL. Nothing else changes, but you sign a contributor's agreement that you assign all of your rights to which you don't have because it's GPL, okay? Just like it, right? It's but a you legal as, move. You assign all of your rights as a contributor to the Typo 3 Association, the nonprofit foundation. Hey, presto, the Typo 3 Foundation Association, association. creates a commercial entity called Typo 3 Inc., Gambeha in this case, all of a sudden, and they can assign the license to this commercial entity, and Matthias is the vendor of Typo 3 and can apply for Legal. tenders that we could be shut out of as Drupal service pros. So this might be this might be something, you know, it, it's tricky because we had to get this idea into the into the hands of our community, which was that's two talks <laughs> <laughs> of how long that happened uh, uh, took place. But the the thing is, so the, our main questions that came up within these discussions, and these were stuff where we were only talking to lawyers. Right, nothing else, no community people. So, who's the creator of the software? Um, and uh, what happens to the money that you make from these things? Because just to give you an idea, uh, a lot of Deutsche Bank runs on Type 3, and they have a service level agreement which runs around 15,000 euros per, mo uh, per month. So, that's like three full-time employees, right? These people could work on Typo 3's core, and this is what we do. So personally, I don't have any shares in the company. I don't make any profit off it. I'm an employee. I'm the CEO, but still, I'm just a stupid employee. You also have no investors. Nothing. No investors, nothing, no venture capital. Um, and uh, this was our most important uh, question. Like, how do we stay independent from outside money? This is why we decided against Robert. No, we didn't decide against you, but... We decided against <laughs> Robert Douglas. <laughs> no. <laughs> Actually, decided for Robert. Um, but the idea was that, that we didn't want any venture capital in the company, which makes our way harder, uh, because we don't have that much funding to, you know, like, work on. Um, but we wanted to stay independent from every outside influence that we could. Um, yeah, that's oh. your case, right? Right. He yeah, knows so, about the U.S. stuff. So this is not a... This is not a Canada. Yeah, don't call them the U.S. Uh, America. This is, a, this is a different legal situation. This wasn't this specific vendor issue, but um, in terms of um, open source having won and uh, proprietary now fighting back, the, uh, the Canadian government Canada.gov brief was, was highly flawed in our view from a, from a number of uh, perspectives, but... The RFP was written in a way that enforced getting a proprietary CMS. I think that the trick was getting um, user seat licenses written into, yeah. into, the, into the RFP. So 
you know, open source where you don't need to pay for per user usage, right? Like, sorry, can't do it. I think that was the trick they used. Anyway, so open source was essentially uh, uh, excluded. Um, Adobe won. Um, there were some super dubious architectural uh, uh, decisions made along the way where it's just way, way too big and way, way too much. Um, I would contend Adobe lowballed the bid significantly for a few tens of millions of, of dollars. Um, as of mid-late 216, delivery was at 10% um, overall, and the budget was at 500% over the initial bid. So, you know, bad idea. There's got to be, there's gotta be a, a point where um, the government of Canada could consider like, just like stopping, not throwing good money after bad and trying You're in too open far. source, right? That's yeah. Amazing. So, um, yeah, so this is a, th an interesting trap where some lobbyists get things positioned right and, you know, uh, this is a situation where maybe Drupal would have been terrible for this because the architectural uh, 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 design was, was bad or maybe we could have influenced it to run differently, but, you know, and we could be in just a bad position, right? But, you know, I want to say I don't think we would be because I think we're smart people and we, by definition, we use money in a very different way in our context, right? Because we're delivering value as we can. Legal issues. This is really interesting. Is this the... Oh, yeah. The so, so check this out. This happened in Germany for real. Joomla, which you spelled wrong because the, uh, the, yeah, the, the CI, there's the an exclamation, exclamation point there, yeah. So Joomla, PHP, open source, CMS. Um... They do things differently than we do. They're good people, it's open source. You know, all fine. Um, Joomla Association was set up to solve the exact problem that we've had in Drupal over and over and over again. How do you run a Drupal camp and collect money and not have it run through someone's private bank account and tax liability and how to use issue receipts, right? Found an association so that you can have some community events. That's why they needed it. Um, it's a nonprofit. And in Germany, the kind of nonprofit that they are, by law, needs to work for the greater good. It has to be, you know, it has to do, it has to benefit people. Um, what's the le What's how do they? What's the word they use to describe that in German? Uh, oh, okay, right. It has to be useful to the broader, to society, right? To society, right? Who sued them? Uh, German tax authority. Right. So the so the IRS in Germany told them, you know what? We don't see that you're doing any good for society running stupid, like, geeks hanging out and eating pizza together. Like, that does not fit our definition of what the greater good is. We're, we are going to remove your tax-exempt status retroactively. Have a nice day. And the Joomla Association said, wait, 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 wait. No, no, Joomla no. What did I say? Joomla. The Joomla Association... <laughs> said, it's very late in the day, wait, 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 no, no, listen, 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 wait, wait, because we do this, and you know, helping and open source, and everybody, they're like, uh, 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 if you want to do good for society, go write a book. That would meet our definition. That's a quote, by the way. This is true. This is real. Well, it's not a quote, because he said, na, gehen sie in Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> okay, but otherwise. So, um, I love this open source story that Matthias is about to tell. All right. So what, what was happening that the Joomla Association started crowdfunding because they needed like six grand to fund a lawyer to help them win their case. Um, and we took a look at that. And I, I have to admit that I was on the spiteful side of things. I was going like, hey, great. Now Joomla is going to implode in Germany. Awesome. More market share. Um, but then I, I just took a look at all the all the uh, transfers that came in, it was like 10 bucks, 15 bucks, and then there was 100 bucks, which was like standing out of that. Um, and we did a quick call at Type of 3 Association and we're basically, okay, let's, let's fund 1,000 bucks with that because this might affect us sooner or later anyways. And the good, is that, um, the good thing is that we can make a legal case out of this that we can then, you know, like pull up the next time the German IRS starts trying to pull tricks on us. Thank you for doing that. That's awesome. You're welcome. <laughs> so, and two, and two, Matthias and, and the Typo 3 Association cleverly created a legal precedent for defining what is for the greater good for open source software communities for, for all of us. Pretty much. Okay. So, we're done. You're welcome. Um, so, this is 
like the key component of this. So I, I hope everybody's aware of the threats <laughs> and the problems that, that are there. Um, so we, we discussed why should we work together because normally when you start thinking about working together, it's about this thing, right? Market share, pie chart, games. So um, in order to, we can play that game, it's totally fine, but we should, you know, this is like the standard statement you get all the time, right? So people do Drupal and they lose the lower tier to WordPress. Um, they lose the upper tier to us. And Adobe. <laughs> Adobe. Adobe, okay. So Adobe is the, like the definition of the bad guys here. Um, so, but what you always hear from, and it doesn't matter if you're in the US or in Italy or in France or in Asia, it doesn't matter. It's always the same story. Like the market isn't big enough. So in order to play that well, so, so how big is the market? How big would you estimate the Drupal turnover per year worldwide? What are we talking? A billion? Two? Ten? We, we, we did proper research on type of three and we're like a tenth of Drupal's size. Our gross turnover is roughly around the billion euro mark per year. Okay. So 10 billion isn't that far off. Um, so the next important question, what is our market? Because people tend to think in the open source silo, right? So they think, well, our market is stuff we can get away from Joomla or from WordPress or from Typo 3 or from Drupal. It's all, you know, like this confined space of things. Um, and if we take a look at the market we define, it should be the entire web. And that's a lot more than just the open source silo. Um, and then we should take a look at how much of this market is actually covered by CMS at all. Um, and then the last important thing, this is just for the WordPress people, screw market share, think turnover, right? It's, it's the same thing. I think, w which company runs the most cars? The most cars? I think it's oh, I don't Honda know. Oh, or I don't Toyota. Know. No, it's Toyota. So I had the same discussion in Italy, in Bologna, which is the home of Lamborghini. <laughs> I was like, yeah, we don't have the huge market share in this country. Like, it's, it's, you build like this freaking cars, which have like this 0 0.001 margin thing. And it's like the in, most incredible car on the world, right? So think turnover. So we brought some charts because we're not coding anymore. So we do charts now. Um, <laughs> so just to take a look at CMS so, uh, or, or the entire market, we figured in turnover that 70% of the web does not use CMS at all. And we had, you did the session this morning where we had 25 people and we had two people in the room that says, yeah, we're trying to move away from Dreamweaver. Yeah, really? I kid you not. <laughs> this happened this morning. <laughs> we did, before this morning, we didn't know that it still worked. Yeah, <laughs> I was also thinking, like, Dreamweaver, that's still a thing. <coughs> Um, and then there's this market share, which runs on CMS systems, and that tiny fraction on top, that's open source CMS, right? We're not talking market share, we're talking turnover revenue being generated. Right, and that's where we're fighting with each other all the time, and that's dumb, right? Absolutely. We can fight really effectively for the orange, and really interestingly, for the green space. That wouldn't make sense. I mean, it's, it's like... You go to a birthday party and you brought cake, right? It makes sense. And now there's more people than you anticipated to come. What do you do? You don't cut the slices smaller, you get more cake. Right? And that's how it should work. Um, what happened to my slides? Does it work? No, it works. Um, the other thing is you want to do the... No, go, 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 every, go, go, go. Everybody's bashing Acquia for doing so much business, right? Um, at least you, you said so. Please bash him now, somebody, thank you. All right, so, see, I proved my point. Um, so <laughs> if we take a look at proper numbers, um, and this is only this tiny fraction of open source uh, content management system, that's like Acquia. And all that is not Acquia. Whoops. Right. So that's <laughs> so, the open source piece of Pi, right? Pretty yeah. much, yeah. So this, this tiny, tiny fraction. So there's enough room for everybody to get like, 
make a good living out of what we do. Um, and now my animation breaks, so I... Here we go. So we basically brought like a synopsis kind of thing. I even don't know if the term is right. Um, so we are competition. Oh, is that where you put that slide? Okay. Now you moved it around. This is totally not rehearsed, by the way, as you might have been able to tell you. We are a well-oiled machine. What are you saying? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> um, but like I mentioned earlier, we're competition, though still fighting for the same thing, right? To make, make open source um, more successful in the market in general. And we had this discussion this morning as well. Um, so people are, are um, they have issues with moving from Drupal 7 to Drupal 8. That's, I, I hear that a lot. Um, and it's about modules not being compatible with Drupal 8 yet, you know, these kind of things. And um, what we figured is that that's the, like the greatest thing about open source is that you can change it, right? Because if you go for a, a proprietary vendor lock-in, there's no way you can ever change these things, mainly because you're not allowed to. Second, you don't have access to source code. Um, and we figured that we should join forces um, to make open source even more successful worldwide because there's a lot of untouched stuff that right. we can jump into. And that's basically the entire divide and conquer approach. Um, work together, get the entire market done, and after that, we can fight not over the pie, but over the entire buffet. And then on our own private islands, right? Right, exactly. So we invite him to Type 3 Island, and he's going to invite us to Drupal Island, and, we'll and everybody else is over. Exactly. And then we can decide who picks yeah. which parts. Right. right. Tech Corporation. Right, so, so this is another reason why we should cooperate. Um, the simple reason is that um, we already are cooperating. Uh, there's this little thing called the age of interoperability in PHP or the, or the PHP renaissance, right? Uh, PHP 5.2 brought us namespaces for the non-developers here. That means I can have two pieces of functionality that plug into my PHP system and they can use variables that have the same names and they won't fight with each other. With each other. They won't cause a conflict. So I can have really radical names like date or time or name or something and that works. So that's an import, that, that made it easier to put different code together. Continue. Uh, that led us to dependency management through a thing called Composer, so we can then, we have mechanisms to plug in and control things that we put into our projects. That's by cool. Way, by the way, fun fact, has anyone ever realized that the Composer logo is actually a conductor? Oh, <laughs> see? <laughs> details, details. Um, yes. We should put that in, in what we're awesome at. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we're awesome at picking nits. Yeah. So um, then we have the PHP uh, framework interoperability group that started codifying other standards that let us work better together. They're called PSR standards. And that let us create things like the first PHP meta project of this era is Drupal 8. We got rid of a ton of our own code, proprietary code essentially, and replaced it with... Uh, two components of the Symfony library to handle HTTP requests and the Guzzle library, which is another open source library. And we outsource that risk and we grow our community by doing that. And all of the things that we have with Twig and Symfony and all these external components now, <clears throat> we're a meta, we're an umbrella over a bunch of other open source projects. This thing that we call Drupal 8 is just like the human body, you know, like what is the bacteria and what is me kind of idea. Frankenstein. Right? <laughs> and then, and, so, and we're super good friends with Symphony, which is a set of functional components also written in PHP. All of this comes together. We're already cooperating and contributing together to all of these things. Typo 3 is written in PHP and uses Symphony components and uses Composer yep. and uses Guzzle. Yep. Huh? PSRs. And PSR. And, and um, they've implemented a bunch of the PSRs. They're ahead of us on a couple of them. You guys have P, uh, PSR 7 in place. But that's for message handling. Already. Okay, yeah. So, but we're not there yet. But we're working on like we're using exactly we're using the same set of toys, right? We're just playing a little bit differently. Um, so we're already cooperating together. These are our friends. This is not our competition in almost any sense of the word. Um, this was obviously a very stressful slide 
to uh, put together. And because we live in Germany, um, we, we, we combated that stress with beer. Now, the problem is, Matthias is from Dusseldorf, and I'm from Cologne. And those two cities are 25 miles apart. Miles, I think. Um, and um, as close friends are with the same set of toys, right? Like, we're neighbors, and we hate each other. Like, we couldn't even agree on what kind of beer to drink. So we had to go to another city where they drink, <laughs> where they drink something else. <laughs> so here are the reasons that we've determined are really, really good not to work together on knocking out the proprietary competition. Is it loading? It's done loading. Yeah. No, we thought about what to put there. This page intentionally left blank. Nothing at all. Anyway, ellipsis, I think ellipsis is good. Um, that, that, that's going to be like the most brilliant tweet ever. Like, great. Key slide of talk. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> Jamma Mati is a genius on display. Yeah, so, so actually, so we're basically at the end of what we wanted to talk about. And, and one of my questions to you is, what are we missing here? Like, why shouldn't we be going to more of each other's conferences? Why shouldn't we be figuring out how to make Symphony better and how to make our libraries better together to make our projects better? And you know what? Matthias won Aida Cruises. Very cool, right? We won Lufthansa this time. Very cool. Like, we're happy about that. It doesn't, like, I don't, I don't think there has to be bad feeling about this because with 70% of the web that's not even using a CMS at all, right, we could double the CMS business and there's still, there's still room, room to grow, right? So, so I don't, so if you can think of reasons not to cooperate, that would be important information Absolutely. for us to know. Like, seriously. So I'm, I'm really hopeful that we were able to um, talk about how, you know, we had this golden age, we have this golden age of open source, but the competition, the proprietary competition has not been asleep. We have to learn to meet them on the field and play their games against them. Um, we feel that collaboration is better than protection. Um, and please stay open-minded and uh, please help make the world a better place. Right, cool. That's it. Go. Move. <laughs> Questions? Yes. Awesome. Doesn't directly answer your question. Okay. But you mentioned that WordPress is taking the bottom end, the lower end of the group market. It, yes. That was an assumption. No, I have an answer. And I wanted, I wanted a definition of what is the lower end. It, well, so um, I'm going to give you a longer answer than you expected, but we've got a couple minutes, right? Um, it was transformational to have a website at all 10 or 12 years ago. And a lot of us got into this business because we could make a website. And then over affordable. time... Affordable website. Oh, an affordable website. And then over time, we could make a beautiful website and a functional website. And an, uh, that it is no longer transformational just to have a website. Everybody's got a website, right? And our skill set, uh, I'm sorry to say... Uh, if it is simply the skill of putting code together to make a website appear, that is also no longer transformational. That is also commodity. So we need to be thinking in bigger, better business models that add actual value beyond the creation of the website, right? So Acquia d exemplifies this in a number of ways, which is easy to talk about, you know, with um, uh, support SLAs, with security, with scalability, um, with now with personalization, all that sort of stuff. Just like people who build... Um, NetNode has built a personal, a, an inbound marketing tool using Drupal 8 called Open Inbound. And I encourage you to check it out. It's really, really cool. And it's all built on Drupal. So you can diversify. You can be a full service agency, add value. In a lot of places, you can specialize by offering products um, that you believe will fit. You can productize things that you already do. All of these are great ways to do business. And that's the story of Acquia. That's the story of Platform. That's the story of lots of us in the community. Um, it is very, very hard nowadays to survive in any way as a business doing $5,000, $15,000, $20,000 projects, right? I mean, I don't know where the cutoff is exactly, but my gut feeling it tells me, from country to country. right, it depends on the country and so on. But churning out cute little brochure websites is no longer a business. Build a system, cool drops in 
Cool Drops in Belgium, um, Drop Solid is the company they built. A, uh, they built their company. They wanted to have more time, so they built a cloud infrastructure. Then they built a site spinning machine on top of that. Now they're still not selling Drupal websites. They sell digital marketing to SME businesses, and they sell five hours of marketer time and a website and analytics help and campaign design help. It just so happens that they're spinning up Drupal websites that look okay and they work fine, but that is not their business. They're teaching, for the first time, SMEs to do marketing. That's amazing. Now, they're doing that based on a system that spins up little tiny Drupal websites, but that's not where they're adding the value. So all of this is to say websites now are only transformational if they're like huge and, and give you data and personalization and what have you, or they do something else. A lot of us don't even need websites because we have Facebook or Medium now, right? And then we've got Wix, we've got Squarespace, we've got WordPress.com, and they're really great self-service tools for making pretty decent websites, yeah? So our lunch is thoroughly eaten below a certain budget point. There is... I don't see the point of doing business below a certain threshold of like just building websites as there's no point in my view of there's no economic sense in it uh, that it's I can mad. see to do that. It's mad. Yeah. He says it's mad. Um, so does that right? We're, right. Yeah. And the self-service tools are only going to get better. And, you know, the importance of Facebook, where they give you a pages mechanism now, that can grow, right? And I blog on Medium because it's incredibly comfortable for me, right? And I have a site, and I like my site, and I still don't post on it because, like, I forgot to update um, the Octopress library, and then I got stuck because I'm not really good at Ruby, and then, you know, and, one, and then, you know, and, I, and it's, you know, it happens, right? but there's a thing that's a service that just runs like, it's convenient, right? So yeah, the, act, the action of making the website is, is less and less significant. Um, and and the, the, the survival point gets pushed higher and higher up the market, which is why don't focus on building websites, go add value somewhere else. Very long answer, but. Uh, I think we have more questions. Did we kill you? Is that Obviously. it? It's late in the day. Yeah, it is. It's pretty much, be oh, okay. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay, so, so I'll just repeat this and then we can unpick it a little bit because it's really interesting. He said like, okay, um, we said we should collaborate and, and, and cooperate and, and not uh, think of ourselves. We can compete for business. That's totally legit, right? But um, he was suggesting that to be proficient at Typo3, to be proficient at Drupal, that there's some really serious skill sets and, and it's a, you know, steep learning curves and so on. Like, how could we possibly invest that much time, right? That would be crazy. Um, it's not what we're talking about, right? Um, can, can you, like, so where could we collaborate? Um, PHP Framework Interoperability Group needs help developing standards for us to write interchangeable components, right? Um, you have a, um, which one is the database standard? I forget now. Um, you have a standard for storing information. And if all of our projects stored data following this standard. Yeah, the content repository. The content repository, P right, PHPCR. Um, if we all use PHPCR, um, not just theoretically, but on a pr pretty damn good practical level, if we decide for whatever reasons, like, I only want to work with tall people, I only want to work with mustachioed people, right? So I'm moving from Drupal to Typo3. My database still works with Typo3. We just go and plug it in over no, there. No, not only the database, the content. Right. The content structures work in both systems if we're both following PHPCR. We can work together on that standard, on those implementations to make our mutual lives um, um, better off if one of our dumb clients decides to go to them, right? 
you know, no, so that's a really, and there's a, there's a ton of, there's a, it would be dumb to, no. Uh, <laughs> there are a ton of opportunities in open source. All of the libraries that we use mutually, all of Symfony, all of Twig, um, all of the JavaScript stuff that we do, it's all open source, and we can all go and contribute there. We can all go and work together. We can teach each other and learn from each other at conferences, online, everywhere. There's a huge collaboration space, right? Marketing. Right? Um, marketing. Open source marketing. Open source marketing. Okay, like doing what we're doing, um, attached to, right? There's that too. So there's a, there's a huge amount of space for us to be going out and saying, um, vendor lock-in, getting uh, value for money from the first dollar you spent, like all these open source stories that we need to start telling again. Um, look at the Gartner Magic Quadrant. Adobe's really strong. Acqui and Drupal's really strong. Epi servers come up. Um, Sitecore has come down a little bit, but we have a ton of big fights to fight out there to get the big ticket projects, right? And, um, you know, I'd be happy for you to get one, for us to get one, you know, trade off a little bit. That would be a great place to be in. Um, and we have some confidence because we can look at each other's code and we share these components. Like, we can actually say with some confidence, using this series of PHP CMSs, like, we know that that's pretty, that's pretty good quality, right? You need a service provider in Dusseldorf and you need someone right there Acquia can't compete with that, yeah? And if you need people on the ground in Boston, right, you have more trouble competing with that. Most so, likely, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so there are great, there are completely okay situations to compete in while we help, you know, we really have each other's backs on all sorts of other fronts. Dave. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, in San Antonio, for instance, for a year, we had no lift in the Uber because we were lawsuits and everything. Right. Okay. So the community driven drivers uh, <laughs> had to come together, lift the Uber game together to go fight oh. against the taxi companies. In San Antonio, Texas, uh, there was legislation against. Uh, the ride-sharing business model and Lyft and Uber drivers came together, the two companies came together to fight that, to make it legal to pr practice that business model in the city. <clears throat> and he's suggesting that that's a similar, a similar kind of a situation. I have grave reservations about the implementation of the network business model in Uber and Lyft's case, but yes. No, no, no but, that's a, no, but that's a great way. Like, we, we have common interests, a ton of common interests, and, and a ton of common enemies. So, like, you know, we'd rather drink excellent beer together and make our stuff better than, than, than fight about dumb details. And I'll say most of my Uber drivers also drive Uber. So, like, they're working in... Like, two cars. smartphones. Yeah, no so, no, so I've been in taxis in some places where there's the My Taxi app and whatever the local one is, and then the Uber and the, the Lyft, like, there's, like, six things across their dashboard, and they're like... Right. And that makes sense as an entrepreneur. Like, I'm opening up. The, so, yeah. Ah. <clears throat> Beers? Are we good? Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you.